Hello guys, and welcome back to another episode of Eric Moss Speaks Out. This will be a special Thanksgiving episode, so instead of this putting on Wednesday, November 25th, this will be on November 26th. I'm filming this on the Wednesday, November 25th, so um, I'll have most of the news that breaks out today. If I don't, that means it broke out afterwards, so um, let's get down. I have a guess scheduled for next week as of right now so it'll just be me again no worries i can carry it i can carry it um anyways let's get down to business let's get down and dirty here we go so movies that are coming out in theaters this week um also this episode will be entirely movies again uh, okay so movie that comes out in theaters this week are creed i already saw this film you see my review up on my channel it's one of my uh, recent videos it's I did, like, yeah, I saw it two weeks ago. So it's one of my most recent videos, if you want to check that out. Other big film that comes out this week is The Good Dinosaur. I've been wanting to see this film. Um, looks great. Reviews have been pretty good as well. Um, Pixar. The marketing, the first couple trailers didn't really catch my eye, and then the like, second trailer really caught me. And second or third, it was one of those. They, they really did... They really stepped up their marketing game game after the like the first couple of trailers and stuff. So looks great, got great reviews. So yeah, I heard that it's not really a lot of dialogue in the film. So yeah, other big release we have this week is Victor Frankenstein, which looks horrible. I seen I was watching football the other day, and they were like showing this TV spot for like all the games, and it just looked horrible and. Uh, reviews aren't giving it much support either, so I am correct. Um, looked horrible. So, yeah. James McAvoy, Dan Radcliffe, why did you do this on your movie careers? I don't know why. Okay, so that finishes up movies and theaters. A few big releases, not really many thoughts on them. So, yeah, let me get on movies that are coming out on Blu ray slash DVD this week, right before Black Friday, which is. Well, for me, when I'm filming this, two days away for when I post it up, one day away. So, yeah. Movies. Um, American Ultra came out. Uh, I have not seen this film. Uh, did not really interest me. I might watch it this week because I have... Um, I'm going to be uh, not busy this weekend, so maybe I'll watch it. Uh, other film we have is Ricky and the Flash, which supposedly... Meryl Streep was was being pushing for Oscars before this film came out. It didn't too well didn't do too well in the box office. Reviews weren't that kind to it either. So yeah, uh, Shaun the Sheep, which uh, came out in England early on in 2015, but didn't come out uh, in America till August. Um, did not see this one yet. Been wanting to see it. I heard this film doesn't have any dialogue in it. So yeah, been wanting to see it. Have yet to see it though. And then the other big uh, DVD we have is uh, DVD Blu-ray is No Escape from uh, Owen Wilson, Pierce Brosnan. Um, I have not seen this. It looked horrible, but it did get decent reviews, surprisingly. So maybe I'll check it out before the end of the year. Because I plan on watching ev a lot of films in 2015 to make a more bigger and stuff to that best to worst 2015 list. So you guys... So it's pretty obvious what gets worse than best options. So yeah. That wraps up movies that are coming out on DVDs. And now I'm going to be talking about the box office that happened from the weekend of November 20th to the 22nd. So number one was Hunger Games with 102.6. Number two was Spectre with 15 million. Dropping 55.3%. Peanuts was third with making 13.2 million. Dropping 45%. The night before was fourth making 9.8 million. The Secret in Their Eyes was 5th, making 6.6 million. Love the Coopers was 6th, making 4.1 million, dropping 50.3%. The Martian was 7th, making 3.8 million, dropping 43.4%. Spotlight was number 8, making 3.5 million, jumping, increasing 160.7%. The 33 was 9th, making 2.3%. 2.3 million, I mean, dropping 59.5%. And Bridge of Spies was number 10. Uh, I think making like 2 million. I forgot to put the number on my notes, but dropping 53%. Uh, Bridge of Spies, uh, quite surprising that this film is still holding up the way it is. Not really in a lot of theaters. 
So yeah, uh, the movie looked boring. I'm uh, maybe I'll check it out. I don't know. It looked pretty boring. It was like two and a half hours as well. Uh, the Thirty Three was a film I had chances to go see. Have yet to see this. I'll probably check it out before the end of the year. Um, but it looked decent from the trailers. A uh, Spotlight is a film I've been wanting to see. It came in the theater right by me, but it was the theater's not good. It's really old, but they had like all the indie art house films there. But I've never been there. I know it's coming to uh, one of the better theaters by me. Um, I think this weekend. So yeah, or today. I think it did today. Um, or yesterday, November twenty fifth. Um, the March and I saw that review on my channel. Really loved it. Keeps on making million million of dollars. Not dropping too hard. So yeah. Um, Love the Coopers was a film that got abysmal reviews by audiences and critics alike. Um, I saw the trailer. It did not look good. Uh, the cast, it's got some talented people in there. And it's just other people just like, eh. Like Ed Helms. Ed Helms, you're pretty boring. I can tell you that. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah. So um, this film, I know like left all, like, all the theaters by me. I'll go check right now. But I think it left like most of the theaters by me. I'm, I'm going to check. There's like 10 theaters around me. So I'm going to check it right now. Um, but yeah, it looked really horrible from the trailers um so yeah i'm on it right now it's only in two theaters by me and they're only playing it three times combined for the two theaters so yeah it it basically left all the theaters by me so yeah so that tells you how bad theaters want to get rid of it um secret in their eyes was a film which could have really had um a lot of stuff but I don't think Julia Roberts was the best choice for this film. It looked like Joel Tadjafor was really talented. And then, um, uh, God, I'm forgetting her name. Nicole Kidman is just, no, it does not bring star power. It's like, she does not. So this film was totally miscast, in my opinion, except for Joel Tadjafor. That's why I feel like it bombed. It could have been an interesting story, but, yeah. Uh, and it got horrible reviews as well. The Night Before is a film I've been really wanting to see. It's a comedy film. Got good reviews. People thought it was hilarious. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Seth Rogen, Anthony Mackie. They said they have great chemistry. I really want to see this film. Don't know when I will, but yeah. Peanuts, another film I've been really wanting to see. Um, still holding in there for good review, for good money. So yeah. Um, Spectre, a film I saw. Review on my channel if you want to check it out. Um, but... Yeah, I'm surprised this movie didn't drop as bad. I originally, I originally read that this film could have dropped only like 45% due to how bad Hunger Games was going, which I'll get on later. Um, but yeah, uh, now Hunger Games made over 100 million, which is not a number you should be complaining about. But due to all the, due to how the other two, other three films performed, it was very disappointing. First two films made over 150 million opening weekend. The last one made over 120 million. This film can only make hundred mil over a hundred million for basically the finale of a saga. It does not look well for this franchise. It looks like people are tired from it, and I'll be shocked if they make a sequel, prequels, or spinoff soon. That's really the box office wrap up this week, guys. And let me get on my movie trailer reviews. Let me hit the not so big ones and a really big one um, because I did not make a separate video for this film because to, for this trailer review. Which I'll get on to the last is because I want to make this Eric Moss speaks out may, way more special. Okay, so first trailer I'm going to be talking about is The Boss, starring Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Bell, comes out next year, April, produced by I think Universal or Paramount. I think one of those two studios. It looks horrible. Um, Melissa McCarthy. It only made me laugh once in the trailer, and it wasn't really like a laugh laugh. It was just like a smile. Melissa McCarthy is so annoying in my opinion. She's annoying she's not really funny she does the same jokes in every movie either curses the through the whole movie or she just falls down and makes it seem funny because a fat person fell ha 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 so yeah it seems like they'll be going in that route uh she, i feel like she's spy i think any movie that she's with paul feig directing usually ends up being well because i think it's 
because Paul Fagg knows what she can do and knows what will work. I feel like Melissa McCarthy needs to just pick supporting roles. She does not. She does not deserve to be in the starring role. The roles. I don't really mind her. I heard she was really good in St. Vincent and Bridesmaids. Because she didn't really have a big role. But when she gave him a big role, she annoys the heck out of me. So, yeah. Uh, uh, a trailer for a new trailer for Zootopia came out as well. I just watched it before. Because I didn't watch it before. And it looked that trailer was f hilarious with the sloth. And how it moves so slowly. Um, Jason Bateman. Jason Bateman really is like... Jason Bateman had some dialogue. Doesn't really have a lot though in the trailer. It's mainly Jennifer from Goodwin uh, doing the dialogue, but it looks hilarious. Uh, looks good from the trailer. Doesn't really get. We haven't really got a full on plot yet, which I'm hoping we get for when a film next year. I don't know. I want another trailer to get on the premise. A uh, trailer for Central Intelligence comes out starring The Rock and Kevin Hart. It looked. It looked pretty. Hel it looked decent from the trailers. It really surprised me. Uh, Kevin Hart, I'm not the biggest Kevin Hart fan. You know, certain times where he is funny to me, certain t most of the times he isn't. Uh, but The Rock, I'm going to see this because of The Rock. The Rock is one of my favorite actors working today in the world and film industry. Um, so yeah, I'll probably end up checking this out. The, the ending of the trailer did not make me laugh at all. I felt like it was a very shoehorned in comedy and I feel like with comedy, you gotta be smart with your comedy. You can't just keep on forcing it down people's throat, or else they're just gonna. I I don't laugh at forced comedy. So yeah. And the last trailer I'm going to break down today is the big one that came out last night on Jimmy Kimmel that I watched, um, already a few times, and that is Captain America: Civil War. I seen the because I do movie reviews on Instagram, so I follow the movie, other movie reviewers on there. And some of them did not like this trailer. I don't know why. They, I don't know. I think they're DC fanboys. And it's just like, give credit where it's due, man. You know, I give credit where it's due for films. I do. You know, if Batman v Superman ends up being the best film ever, I'm going to say that. But um, some of them really said this one was coming out just because Batman v. They wanted to make a war. They wanted to compete with. Batman v Superman, I'm just like, no, Batman v Superman came out, was supposed to come out in July, Civil War was coming out already, because it was a plan 5 to 10 years beforehand, and Civil War was actually a comic series, it wasn't some, just mixing the characters type thing, it was already an established comic book line, so yeah, I, some of them, I don't know what to think, but anyways, uh, coming back to Civil War, I really loved the trailer, I was amazed by it, um, the ending shot with uh, Bucky and Captain America being now Iron Man really looked fantastic. Black Panther looks really good in the film. Uh, we don't see him get to talk, but we did see him in combat, which looked look fantastic. We get minor glimpses of action scenes, not a whole bunch of action, but you know, they really look to satisfy your taste. General Ross looked really good in the film. No Spider Man or Ant Man. I really want to see that Ant Man scene they showed off in Comic Con with the. Uh, um, Thank you, Captain America and stuff. Can I touch your pecs? It, it, that seems, it seems hilarious. Um, Spider-Man, I feel like they're going to treat him like Luke Skywalker. Like like they're doing the Star Wars 7 um, marketing where they don't show him until the actual film. Which I would not be surprised. Surprise. But I heard that there's supposed to be an Entertainment Weekly theme to Captain America Civil War. So many people were speculating. Will that give the first look of Spider-Man? I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, film looks pretty good, um, really good ash actually, uh, I like the one dialogue with Tony Stark and Captain America saying like, I had a friend of mine, I lost him, and then Iron Man was like, so did I, so I think that was really, really well done, um, hell yeah, I can't wait to see this movie, Anthony Mackie looks like he has a really big role in this film compared to the last two films he was in, with Ant-Man and Captain America One Soldier, Anthony Mackie, I really love him in films. He's one of the best things in films, usually. So, yeah, I can't wait, not wait to see Anthony Mackie get a bigger role. Anyway, that wraps up my trailer review section. So, let me get on my movie news section. Um, so, yeah, some of these stuff I'm not fully um, notified on. But, yeah, hello. Let's go. Um, so, uh, Sam Riley, who I think was in Maleficent, 
uh, is rumored the, I think reportedly supposed to play the villain in Ghost of the Shell. The thing I know about Ghost in the Shell is that um, Scarlett Johansson is in it, and I think it's based off anime, and I think it's being released by Touchstone, which is um, owned by Disney. But a samurai, I've never really seen him in anything, can't really make a judgment off him as a villain. So yeah. Uh, Crims Hemsworth is rumored, is supposedly glowing up for a Alan Quartermain role movie, new movie of Alan Quartermain. He was recently seen in the Sean Connery film League of Extraordinary Gentlemen or something like that. That movie was horrible. Chris Hemsworth, I think this guy is Southern. Um, let me search him. I think the character he's playing is Southern. I really want to see, uh, no, well, well, Chris Hemsworth did do a Southern accent for a, um, vacation. So, Alan Quartermain, uh, yeah, he was um in novels and stuff and League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and um, protagonist of H. Ryder Haggard's eighteen eighty five novel King Solomon Mines and its sequels. Uh, but yeah, Chris Hemsworth, one of the best actors working in the day. So yeah, I think he can do good. Another bit of news, Kathy Bates joins Bad Santa Two. The only thing I'm really saying about this Bad Santa 2 really ramping up in production. Cannot wait. I really like the first one. And um really can't wait to see this one. I did not read who she's gonna be playing in the film, but at least they're doing casting and it seems it looks like it's actually gonna be made finally. Um Justice League Dark has some rumored directors up on the short list, and that's Aran Kuznals and Davet Papashado. I forget what they did. And Fadi Alvarez who did the Evil Dead remake. Um, do not know any of these. I don't know why they're. It looks like they're just going after um, uh, Hispanic directors. I'm just like, okay, you lost Del Toro, who was I think Hispanic, and now you're going after another Hispanic director. So, um, okay, uh, you know, I don't know why they're limiting themselves. But anyways. I just think Dark could be a good film with uh, Constantine and such. But yeah, I think um, it could be a good film. Uh, Christopher McQuarrie, who was the director of Mission Impossible 5, is now supposedly... He has a choice of returning for Mission Impossible 6. Because um, Mission Impossible 6 starts up production next summer for summer 2000. For a 2017 release date, and um, he's rumoredly with the great reception the sixth one, fifth one had. I mean, he, I think, I think he had trouble, and I'm going to search throughout his films. But now he's says that hits. Uh, I'm searching on IMDb, but I read the article, I read the headline article, and it said that he has a choice of returning now. Uh, Okay, here we go. Christopher McQuarrie. Uh, I know he... Re I think he's writing a whole bunch of stuff which I really think is bothering him at the... Uh, three to Kill. Um, I'm just reading his stuff from his filmography on IMDb. But, uh, yeah. He's... Supposedly, he... Um, okay, this is... Verity... I can't say that word correct, guys. Variety are today reporting that Chris McCurry could be returning to the Mission Impossible series to direct the sixth movie. If this is the case, he will be the first director to direct multiple movies in the series. The trade says McQuarrie is in talks to direct MI6 following his impressive turn on this summer's Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, which we absolutely love. Production is set to start by next August with a 2017 re release eyed. Variety also says that Paramount is also holding an option for Becca Ferguson to reprise her role. Um, yeah, I, I think I remember we were saying that like, he wasn't going to return back when the film came out, but now it looks like he will. Uh, I have yet to see this movie. Who else? Maybe I'll watch it this weekend, actually. But yeah, um, Christopher McCurry, he also wrote Edge of Tomorrow, which I really loved. So yeah, why not? Okay, so now my next, my next news is, um, Riddick, um, the Vin Diesel movies, Chronicles of Riddick and Pitch, Pitch Black and Riddick. Is not going to get a TV show, and they announced a sequel. Um, TV show is supposed to be um, dealing with bounty hunters and mercenaries from the 
Riddick universe. I don't know. I think probably Finn Diesel will probably show up a few times in the series. But anyways, um, the sequel is officially being written now from the director from the first three movies, and it's called Furia. And I think I remember reading. I I I've not seen Riddick in a long time, but it came out in 2013, 2013 so I probably haven't seen like a year and a half. Um, but he's in Fury at the place where he's from. I'm not too big on Riddick mythology, but I think that's the place where he's from. Uh, so yeah, um, I have no problem. I did not like the Riddick movie, um, just because it felt like they were holding back too much. Uh, Riddick, he showed off some good stuff in the movie, but they didn't show enough of him, in my opinion. They had him really constrained. They really had him constrained in the movie. I didn't really like that. Um, so yeah, so it it could be a good movie. It could be fun, enjoyable. Uh, um, just more movie news here. Um, Matt Reeves wore the Planet of the Apes and Seven contest, where you can become an ape extra. I would totally join this contest if if I could, because they said you need to be eighteen. So I'm just like, God darn it, man. Um, I really want to join this. I really want to be in. There. I really want to get like get up in that mocap suit and stuff. But anyways, um, yeah, you can go and join this contest. I think it's the end of the week weekend. But yeah, I really want to do this, man. I can't believe they're already shooting this film because the film doesn't come out till late summer two thousand seventeen. They're like filming it two years beforehand. I'm just like, oh, okay. Okay, so the next bit of news we have is Angelina Jolie is rumoredly supposed to be in Bride of Frankenstein or Wanted 2 uh, from Universal. And the reason why she's doing, the reason why th why she's rumored this is because Universal backed up, gave money to make her, her buy the scene movie, which is getting awful reviews and not doing too well in the box office. And hope for to do Wanted to a Bride of Frankenstein, and I think Angelina Angelina Jolie is one of the overrated act actresses in film industry right now. Um, she doesn't do anything to me. I she doesn't, she doesn't excite me. She doesn't like oh I gotta see that movie because of her type thing. So yeah, no, if she's in this film, any of these films, be like okay, Chris Pratt was in Wanted. I want him back. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Uh, this one isn't really connected to the film, but it could be, uh, Hey Arnold's getting a TV movie along with, uh, possibly other ones in the line comparing to how this one works out. Uh, Hey Arnold, I remember watching it early on in my childhood and never, um, so yeah, I'll probably end up watching this just because they said they're going to explore Arnold's, um, backstory and stuff and like that. So yeah, can't wait to watch it. Uh, so Alien 5, the delayed Alien 5 from Neil Blumkamp, was supposedly supposed to focus on older Newit, which was the little girl from Aliens, I think that movie was. But anyway, um, you know, I don't know why you need to continue off from the Alien franchise. I don't know why you can't just create something new. So, you know, it. You know, it, it provides continuity, of course, but I rather see something new. Like I, they, I feel like they're putting too much eggs in the basket type thing. You know, Neil Blomkamp has not made a great film since District Nine. Um, but yeah, I have faith in it, but I'm not really sure of the, the direction they're heading. I only got four bit of news, guys. So this one's only gonna be like ten minutes shorter than the other ones. Uh, Fantastic Four sequels was pulled by Fox earlier this week. I do not like that move. I was like the only one they really enjoyed the Fantastic Four movie. I felt like it was definitely had definitely set a foundation for sequels. It had problems though, I can admit that. But they definitely could have made something out of it if they got a good director. The director, I feel like the studio and Trank had different views on stuff, and it's just like they made that movie just to keep the rights. I can admit that, but I was really, I was really enjoying the film. I feel like they extended the third act longer. It could have been a really nice film, and um, but I heard that they reshot the whole entire third act, and you can definitely feel that. It's like once Doctor Doom comes in, uh, because I'm not gonna spoil it. But once Doctor Doom comes in, it kind of goes like. 
boom, boom, climax, done, we're done. It's like, it moves along so quick. It's like, what? It's like, it was moving along at a decent pace, and now it was just like, it's over? Okay. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, would, I, would really want, I really want to see what they had in mind for a sequel. Um, other news, Star, Wars, Star Trek Behind is officially going to be an IMAX. Comes as no surprise compared to the other two being an IMAX. Um, but yeah, you know, it's an IMAX. You know, I'm probably not going to see it in IMAX. So yeah, because it's not one of my films. Um, Tom Cruise is rumoredly supposed to be in the Mummy uh, reboot um, in the Universal Monster Movies um, universe. And, um, sorry about that, guys. A, um... I had a thing I had to intend to, but yeah, I'm back now, as I was talking about Tom Cruise in the Mummy reboot, um, in the Monster Universe, uh, he's supposed to be playing the ex-Navy SEAL, and I was not a big fan of the plot, um, it's supposed to be where, um, military people stumble, and looking for something in the Middle East or something, stumble upon the tomb of, uh, Mummy, of course, the Mummy's rumored to be a female, but I was not a big fan of this plot, and I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it will be better when I see it on screen. But I'm not too well. I'm not too fond of it right now. But Tom Cruise always good in film, so you know, I'm good for him. You know, I, he definitely puts me lack of. He definitely puts more faith in me. But that basically says that Edge of Tomorrow won't come in 2017. So I'm kind of mad about that. Anyways, uh, two. Two last bit of news. M Men in Black 4 is looking for a female lead. Um, you know, I'm fine with a female lead. Just have a male lead as well. Um, so yeah, you know, if you don't get an annoying actress to be the female lead, and you get the male lead as well, so you have like a comic duo type thing, I think we really well. The last bit of news, Michael Giancino is returning to score Incredibles 2. Incredibles has won the it has a really good score. Can't wait to hear this one. I really want to see what the ideas I have for Incredibles 2. Really, really, really do. But anyways, good news from, um, good, good news. Anyway, that wraps up Eric Moss Speaks Out, episode 3, aka special Thanksgiving episode. I hope you guys all liked this video. Uh, next week I have a, probably gonna have a guest via Skype. I gotta, return, I gotta figure out how to record Skype calls. But anyways... Leave in the comment box below what you guys thought of any of the topics I discussed, whether movies coming out in theaters, movies, DVDs, trailer reviews, movie news, box office breakdown. So if you have any questions on that, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment box below. Uh, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'll put my username up on the screen now. Uh, like my Facebook page. I'll put my Facebook page on the screen around now. Uh, if please like and share it, sh please like and share the video with friends and family. Um, because I really want this to make a big staple, st the trademark sta staple of my channel. If you haven't subscribed to me, please do, because this will be a regular thing, and I hope you guys don't want to miss it. Anyways, hope you guys have a good day, and goodbye.